of the report of the Budget and Appropriations Committee on its consideration of the supplemental estimate for the financial year 2024-25 laid on the table of the House on Tuesday, 23rd July 2024, and pursuant to the provisions of Article 223 of the Constitution and Section 39 of the Public Finance Management Act 2012 and Standing Order 243, one, approves a decrease, decrease of the current expenditure for financial year 2024-25 by Kenya shillings 38 billion, 896 million, 358,312 in respect of the votes contained in the first schedule. Two, approves a decrease of the total capital expenditure for financial year 2024-25 of Kenya shillings, 107 billion, 445 million, 697,478, in respect of the votes contained in the first schedule. Three, approves an overall decrease in the total budget of financial year 2024-2025 by Kenya shillings, 146 billion, 342 million, 55,790 in respect of the votes contained in the first schedule subject to paragraph 6, Committee of Supply. 4. Makes the policy resolutions as contained in the fourth schedule. 5. Resolves that the first schedule forms the basis for the introduction of the Supplementary Appropriation Bill 2024. And, and that further to the Appropriations Act 2024, the sum allocated to meet the expenditure recurrent and development for the year 30th June 2025 in respect of vote 1023, State Department for Correctional Services, be reduced by a sum not exceeding Kenya shillings one. Sorry, 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 sorry. Number six, a mix-up of papers. Orders that the speaker do now leave the chair to facilitate the consideration of the said budget estimates with respect to each vote and program in the Committee of Supply as contemplated understanding order 240, consideration of supplementary estimates in the Committee of Supply. As men as of that opinion say aye. aye. Do those of the condo opinion say nay? Aye. The ayes have it. Honorable members will now go to order number 10. And before we go to the committee on order number 10, I have the following communication. As a guide on consideration of the president's reservations to the finance Bill 2024. Honorable members, you recall that on Tuesday, 23rd July 2024, I conveyed a message from His Excellency the President referred, referred the finance, referring the Finance Bill, National Assembly Bill number 30 of 2024, back to the House for reconsideration in exercise of the powers conferred under Article 115.1b of the Constitution. I did refer the reservation to the Department of Committee of Finance and National Planning for consideration. The committee has since laid its report on the memorandum. Honorable members, for the information of the House, I wish to note that the committee has recommended that the House agrees with the President's reservations that all the clauses of the bill be deleted. In this regard, I wish to draw the attention of the House to the Speaker's communication on 28th July 2015 on the consideration and scope of President's reservations. As by the cited communication, any member who wishes to move the House to reinstate any clause of the Finance Bill 2024 shall be required to marshal the support of at least 233 members. This is in keeping with the provisions of Article 115.4 of the Constitution, which requires that such a proposal be supported by at least two-thirds 
of the members of the National Assembly. Not two-thirds of members present and voting, but two-thirds of the whole House as constituted. Converse honorable members, agreement with the President's reservations and the recommendation to delete all the clauses of the Finance Bill 2024 shall only require the support of a simple majority of the members present and voting. This is in line with the provisions of Article 115.2a of the Constitution as read with Article 1221 of the Constitution. As a summary of this guidance is contained on page 1987 of the order paper. The House is accordingly guided. I thank you. So honorable members, as you go into the committee, the chair of the committee will be calling out each clause. Any member who has a contrary view, you must demonstrate that you have 233 members present in this house to vote for you in support of what you want to reverse. If you don't marshal that, then don't even bother to contest the reservations. I now request you to be upstanding. Hold on, let them call out the order first. Sergeant, hold on. Sorry, sorry. We have not called out the order. Take your seats. Call out. Yes, uh, Honorable Member for KO South, you have an issue? Give him the mic. Uh, Mr. Order, we, I have somebody on the floor. <laughs> yes. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, <clears throat> I seek your advice on Article 115, uh, Subarticle 3. Mr. Speaker, Subarticle 2. That is 115.2, says, if the president refers a, a bill back for reconsider, uh, reconsideration, parliament may, following the appropriate procedure under this part, amend the bill in light of the president's reservations, B, pass the bill the second time. Number three, if parliament amends the bill fully, accommodating the president's reservations, the appropriate sp uh, speaker shall resubmit it to the president for accent. My question, Speaker, Honorable Speaker, I assume this House will agree with the president, and we will pass everything, removing all the clauses. So shall we be taking back an empty bill to the president? Uh, uh, yes, Meli. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I can see the House is welcoming me because I'm getting used to uh, sitting in minority leadership position. Um, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd actually uh, consulted you uh, on the side yesterday on behalf of Honorable Tiende Amolo in relation to the same Article 115 of the Constitution. And over and above what the Honorable Member has suggested, unfortunately, because I thought this was coming back, was going to come on Tuesday, so I've not actually come with these written uh, uh, submissions. But <coughs> what Honorable Tiende Amolo was requesting, over and above what the Honorable Member has said, was that according to him, within 14 days, automatically the bill becomes law. And therefore, in his considered legal view, uh, then what should have been done was to just do a one-liner um, uh, seeking to repeal a bill that had already passed. So I would want to uh, say on behalf of Honorable Tiende Amolo uh, that he's also got the same concerns under Article 115 of the Constitution. Thank you. Honorable members, yes. Honorable Tiende Amolo wrote to me, order... Honorable Mili Oda and Honorable Member for Keio South. If you read the Constitution very carefully and understand it, 
when the bill is sent to the president, he can pick out clauses he doesn't agree with and send to the House. That is what is contemplated in what you have quoted. Then the bill will come back with specifically identified clauses that the president does not an agree with and a proposal on what he wants or she wants, even the president is a lady. The House will then consider if you marshal two-thirds majority, you can overturn the president's reservations and restore the clauses as you passed them ab initio. If you don't marshal, then the reservations become part of the bill. And the remaining parts of the bill which had no reservations together with the reservations clauses that you either have agreed with or not agreed with, depending on the numbers you marshal, then there will be still a bill to take back to the president for assent. In this particular case, the president has expressed reservations on everything, including the title. So what has come here is a bill as you passed with a reservation on the short title, the long title, the memorandum, all the clauses. So if you fail to overturn what the president has reserved, then there is nothing to take back to the president for assent. And there is already precedent set by this house there's a member who brought a bill to amend the Contracts Act. Another to amend, I think it was the Central Bank Act, or the Penal Code. And each had only one amendment. When they were taken to the president, expressed reservations to the clause amending the Penal Code. The House was unable to overturn. So what was left was only the title of the bill and nothing else. You can't cut a title of the bill to the president for assent. So it all died there. Number three to Honorable Mili. Honorable Tienda Molo has engaged me on some jurisprudence on this matter. And we have engaged one on one. I've reminded him of my seniority in the legal profession and my long usage of the law. And I told him, and I want to repeat, that what he sent to me as a draft bill to repeal the finance bill were just papers. Because you can't repeal what is not an act of parliament. Once the bill was sent to the president, if the president does not ascend to the bill within 14 days, it automatically becomes law. If he has reservations and sends it back to the House, then those 14 days do not apply. Then you come back to the House, deal with the reservations, and if you overturn his reservations, you take back the bill to him to assent as you have passed. So tell Honorable Tenda Molo that what I told him about the law and what he wrote to me is repeated in this House and that the academic exercise was just good for communication between the speaker and him, but carried no material value whatsoever in considering this bill. Honorable members, I hope that rests the matter. Yes, Caroli? Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. I think we need some little clarity on the step that we will take as a house once we amend the bill by adopting the reservations of the president. Because what the Constitution says is when there's a referral, we have two options. One, we can amend by accepting all the reservations of the president. We have still amended the bill. Yeah. Or we can review the reservations of the president and amend. In other words, we introduce new clauses. 
When we introduce the new clauses, the Constitution requires us to marshal the two-thirds. But even if we adopt the amendments as expressed by the President, all the reservations, which I hope we are all going to do, the Constitution requires us still to present a document from the House to the President for his assent to signify that all his reservations have been accepted and that bill has been formally terminated. And may I read? If Parliament amends the bill fully accommodating the President's reservations, the appropriate Speaker shall resubmit it to the President for assent. So we must send a document from the House to the President. That is what the Constitution Honorable says. Honorable Carolio Thank Mondi, you. I don't know if you followed my explanation. If this Honorable Carolo Mondi, if, if the President had sent to the House portions of the bill on clauses he does not agree with, then the bill, as you passed in portions he has not expressed any reservations, remain validly passed. Then you deal with what he has reservations on. If you marshal 233 and overturn his reservations, you send back the bill in original form as you passed it. Then he has to assent. If you fail to raise two-thirds and you have clauses that were saved in the memorandum, then you take back the bill as you passed it with the reservations as they came as now part of the bill. So the bill is now amended with those reservations. In this particular case, the president has told you that he has reservations on the entire bill, including the title. So when you agree with the president in his memorandum, there is no bill there to take back for assent. The matter ends there. All that the speaker will do is convey a message to the president that the House agreed with you on this bill and there is nothing to bring to you to assent. Yes, uh, Jeanette. Mr. Speaker, I, I think... Yes. Mr. Speaker... Mr. Speaker, I think this matter is settled by your last statement, that you need to write to the president to agree, to tell him that the House has agreed with his communication, because what members are asking for, Mr. Speaker, you know, when a bill goes through the third reading and it is taken for assent to the president, that bill is no longer ours. It is now with the president. Mm -hmm. Before the third reading, we have all the powers within Parliament here to either withdraw it or push it aside or whatever we want to do with it. The question that they are asking is, where is the graveyard? Where is the grave? Is it in Parliament or in the State House? The grave of this bill is in the State House, Mr. Burial Speaker. Rights. The burial right. So you communicate to him that we have agreed with him all the clauses he has deleted, and please take it and bury it there and don't return it back again, Mr. Speaker. That's the communication. Yes, Majority Leader. Thank, thank you, Honorable Speaker. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, Junetta has put it uh, very well. Because not, indeed... Not what, being a lawyer, he has done very well. <laughs> he's, he's put it in layman's terms. Yes. That indeed what we are conducting now is the, uh, the, the service. The rookie mass. The, uh, after the mass this afternoon, the final interment will be in State House... And the speaker will convey a message to His Excellency the President that the House has agreed with him. But I also hear what the Honorable Carol Yomondi is saying. And probably, Honorable Speaker, if, and I say if, we were under ordinary circumstances, there are probably certain things like the tax amnesty that was being granted to Kenyans 
that maybe the Honorable Karoli Omondi or any other member of this House would have sought to save from this bill, and then the Honorable Speaker would have had something to present to the President, negating his reservation. Because what has happened with this, the death of this finance bill, Kenyans who are going to enjoy tax amnesty for the next one year will now not enjoy that tax amnesty. Kenyans, Honorable Speaker, who are also going to be exempted from ETIMS, our small-scale business people and farmers who are going to enjoy exemption from ETIMS, have now lost that opportunity with the death of this bill. But Honorable Speaker, maybe is some of the learnings that we will continue to learn as a country that when we consider bills in this House, and Honorable Speaker, I think the questions that are being asked to you by the member for KO South, the member for Suba South, and also the issue raised by uh, Senior Advocate Otiende Amolo are critical in informing Kenyans, Honorable Speaker. Because you remember on the X space, Honorable Speaker, when the President declined to assent to this bill, on the X space, Honorable Speaker, Kenyans were being told, oh, forget about what is being done today. This bill will actually still become law at the lapse of 14 days. And it is good for Kenyans also, Honorable Speaker, and I'm saying this because uh, to thank you for indulging those questions and even the issues raised by the Honorable Tienda Amolo through Honorable Mili, for Kenyans now to be informed that a bill can never become a law or an act of parliament unless and until it is assented to by the president or at the lapse of 14 days if the president does not assent to it or send it but does not act, does not do anything. If this bill was sent to the president and he stayed with it for, for beyond 14 days from the time it is presented to him, then it became law. And Honorable Speaker, these are some of the untruths and falsehoods that were being peddled out there, Honorable Speaker. And because, Honorable Speaker, as we said during the Kamukunji, in a way, just like the President considered that his government had failed Kenyans in terms of being able to communicate, even ourselves as a House, Honorable Speaker, and I said this in the Kamukunji and in our leadership meeting, we have also failed in communicating and letting Kenyans know what actually goes on in this House, Honorable Speaker. I remember many Kenyans at the end of the second reading believed that now that was fit accompli and the bill had come to an end. That is why even on the 25th of June, Kenyans, many Kenyans did not understand that even part of the amendments that were being done were helpful. And Honorable Speaker, it is a lesson for us uh, following the death and eventual interment of this bill for us as a house probably to bring back the parliamentary open days. Let us bring our young men and women in the country and sit in this house in the public gallery and get to understand what is actu the actual process of lawmaking and when does a law become a law and when is it that you can change things, when can't you change things. Because Honorable Speaker, it's my submission that we have indeed as a house failed to a large extent in allowing or letting Kenyans understand the lawmaking process and what goes on in this house. And we have assumed that uh, everybody understands what goes on in this house, Honorable Speaker. And thank you. Yes, Wanjala. Rafael Wanjala. We are using this one. I can't ah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you for responding to several issues the members have asked you because these were the questions that were disturbing Kenyans outside there. And Mr. Speaker, this bill has been very, has really cost, costed some of people who voted yes. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, we don't want to waste time with it. We want it dead like yesterday. Please, can, you, can we go ahead and kill it right now? <laughs> we want it dead. <laughs> yes, Osoro? I'm sure... Mr. 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 Speaker? Yes. Mr. Speaker, this is uh, an un 
presented, uh, presidented the matter. It is not unprecedented. I, and I want to explain, yes. I, I really want to explain, Honorable Speaker, what I mean, in as much as I agree with you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I think the drafters of the Constitution did not envision a time or anticipate a period where the President will reject the entire bill and send it back to Parliament. Because, Honorable Speaker, our powers are limited. That we either amend the bill in light of the President's reservation, or we pass the bill a second time without amendment, Honorable Speaker. And after we do that, we send it back to the President, Honorable Speaker, as uh, uh, Section 3 uh, you know, of uh, this particular Article uh, uh, 115 uh, uh, says, Honorable Speaker. But like you've well put it, where there is such a lacuna in law, Honorable Speaker, this institution, which is a law-making uh, institution, Honorable Speaker, a legislative arm of government, is also free to make you know, uh, the laws or amend the laws within the confines or where the law is silent, where the Constitution of Kenya, the supreme law of the land is silent. And like you've said, the Gikaria matter was rejected by the, uh, the president. We also rejected the Gikaria uh, uh, bill here. And you communicated an empty document. So what needs to come out clear that in such scenarios, you communicate emptiness, you communicate a blank bill and say we've agreed with you and that then becomes the standard uh, uh, procedure, Honorable Speaker. But what the Honorable Members are asking, what do you take back to, pre to the President? Do you take the, uh, back to the President a deleted bill or do you take an empty document? That is what... This matter, I'll convey to him a message that the House has agreed with your reservations on this bill in its entirety. And that is the end of the matter. All down, honorable members, will you be upstanding? Will you be upstanding? Eh? Have you called it out? Call out now. Order number nine, ten. Go ahead. Order number 10, Committee of the Whole House. Be upstanding, Honorable Members. Honorable Soro, be upstanding. That matter is as clear as daylight. We shouldn't pontificate on it anymore.
Honorable members, order. Order, honorable members. We are now in the committee of the whole house. You may be seated. Honorable members. Honorable Osoro has whip. Order, honorable members. Honorable Milio Diambo. Honorable members, let us proceed. Honorable Milio Diambo, you are the incoming leader of majority, minority, and you are now you are practicing, but you should be putting order in the house. Let us proceed. Honorable members, we are now in the committee of the whole house. Consideration of the president's reservations to the finance bill, National Assembly Bill number 30 of 2024. Yes, well, yes your point of order, Honorable Kajuang. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I thank you for chairing this session. And I thank the substantive speaker for correctly analyzing the constitutional meaning of Article 115, uh, 3 and 4. Now, Madam Chair, when you look at those articles, in my view, and today you have a very able clerk that uh, is averse to these issues, and per perhaps we can think together. But when we get into a committee stage such as this, the chair should satisfy herself or himself that we curate. In other words, we must have two thirds, even to consider, even to sit on it. And if that is, uh, if we miss that, then, Madam Chair, we need not go clause by clause, so that we don't have to sit here for the whole time, and yet we are not able to consider even the first clause, even the title. It is an act of futility, it is an act in vanity, I submit. Honorable TJ Kajuang, I think the substantive speaker has already pronounced himself on the quorum required, but also you shouldn't fear that we shall take too long because we are having them in various chapters on subject matter. So we will be able to proceed quickly. So yes, we shall... Your concerns are alleviated. Let us proceed. Mover. Leader of majority. Hmm. Provisions relating to Income Tax Act, Cap 470, clauses 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. Mover, the majority leader, proceed. Income tax. Thank you, Chair. I beg to move that the clauses as read out be deleted as proposed by His Excellency the President. Honorable Speaker, these are some of the clauses that I indicated uh, when the Speaker was still on the chair, that part of the changes that would have come with this finance bill, part of the positive things that came with this finance bill, which unfortunately, Honorable Speaker, as the country engaged both here, at least not here, here because we were pointed out, but as the country engaged even on the expenses and elsewhere in other public fora, these are some of the positives that nobody ever spoke about. Honorable Speaker, with the deletion of these clauses on the Income Tax Act, I have indicated, Honorable Speaker, that we intended to give exemption to Mamambogas, subsistence farmers, small-scale traders, anyone who is required to file their returns using ETIMS, Honorable Speaker, 
they were going to be exempted. And especially for our farmers and micro enterprises, Honorable Speaker, whose gross income is below a million shillings, they would not need have, uh, they never needed or would not have been required to file their returns through ETIMS. But Honorable, Honorable Speaker, if you can protect me from Honorable Kawanjiko who is conversing in Kikuyu behind me. I was saying, Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Kawanjiko, for instance, Shiko from Ruaka, who is a small-scale trader, would not have required to have an ETIMS to file her returns if her gross income is below a million shillings. All that is lost, Honorable Speaker, now with the deletion of all these clauses. Honorable Speaker, we were going to introduce minimum top-up tax to multinationals, not for Kenyan companies, Honorable Speaker, but for multinationals to be able to top up their taxes if they are paying in other jurisdictions a tax rate that is lower than that which is being paid for here. For instance, Honorable Speaker, if there's a multinational operating in Kenya and uh, through profit transfers they are paying say 15% in another country, and here the corporate tax rate is at 30%, to top up that 15%. And that would have meant that those multinationals would have paid more taxes to us and generated more revenue. That, again, Honorable Speaker, is lost. More importantly, Honorable Speaker, for me, many Kenyans, especially many business people, came to us and said that they are owed hundreds of billions by our county governments and even by government ministries. While they are owed by government, both at the county and national level, the same government is demanding taxes from them, and they are being penalized for taxes that they have not paid. And they are getting a tax, uh, a tax amnesty for a further period of nine months as the pending bills committee co uh, completes its work and money is processed for them to get paid so that they pay their taxes without paying penalties. And this would also have increased uh, our revenues by close to another 30 to 40 billion shillings, besides being a relief to many of our business people. Unfortunately, Honorable Speaker, many of these business people now will have to contend with dealing with KRA because that tax amnesty came to an end on the 30th of June this year. And therefore, they will not be able to enjoy that tax amnesty that was extended to them in the Finance Bill of 2023, and which we sought to extend to this, uh, this year, to next year around March, by a further nine months. Last year, Honorable Speaker, our post-retirement medical schemes, Honorable Speaker, are also going to enjoy a saving by increasing, or rather, Honorable Speaker, we are to support savings by uh, uh, people who are saving in post-retirement medical schemes. Again, in an endeavor to encourage Kenyans to save. Honorable Speaker, today, many of us here, and Honorable Speaker, the perfect example would be members of parliament, senior public servants who enjoy, and other people in the corporate world, who enjoy very lucrative or very rewarding or very good medical cover schemes when they're in employment. But upon retirement, they have no medical cover and end up suffering in the institution because of uh, medical bills. And Honorable Speaker, we are giving people a limit, increasing the limit from 10,000 to 15,000 of post-retirement schemes if you save up to 15,000 shillings per month. That is about 180,000 shillings in a post-retirement medical scheme you are going to enjoy tax rebates. You will not have to pay up to 15,000 per month or up to a total of 180,000 shillings a year on any saving amount you saved in a post-retirement medical scheme. That, again, Honorable Speaker, is all lost under the Income Tax Act. But with that, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that we delete all those clauses. It's unfortunate because when Kenyans say reject, we rejected everything good and bad. I just took liberty to point out the good that we rejected, and it is now rejected, dead, and buried. And I beg to move. 
Honorable members, I now propose the question that closes one, one two, two, that close two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, and twenty five, and close twenty six be deleted as recommended by His Excellency the President. It's the mood of the House that should put the question. Yes, Honorable Makali. Ah, waja, we, we, waja to ongea, wa. Wa, ni, see, si, majority leader me ongea. Okay, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. <laughs> thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Honorable Chairperson, I've listened to the majority leader, and I, what I thought we should just do, that even though we had some clauses would have helped Kenyans, Kenyans did say we do it with this bill. Can he just say we, we agree with the president and delete those clauses without any explanation? I submit. Okay, honorable members, I now put the question that closes 2 to 26 be deleted as proposed. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? aye. Will as many as of the contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. Next. Pro provisions relating to Value Added Tax Act. Clauses 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. Mover, leader of majority. BAT. Thank you, Honorable Chair. And I beg to move that the clauses as read out without repeating be deleted as proposed by His Excellency the President. Again, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Chair, allow me to just point out some of the good things that were in this bill relating to VAT. Because again, Honorable Chair, Kenyans were made to believe that there was VAT on almost everything that was being put on this bill. I remember Honorable Speaker at one point engaging with Kenyans, and uh, a young lady told me that you guys are so heartless. You're even adding VAT to cancer drugs. And that was sold out there, and Kenyans believed it, that there was VAT on cancer medication. Far from the truth, Honorable Chair, there was not an amendment or any proposal in the finance bill dealing with cancer drugs or putting VAT on cancer drugs. What was there was the financing of cancer treatment to be absolutely free for Kenyans. That is lost today, Honorable Speaker. We had sought to zero rate locally assembled mobile phones, Honorable Speaker. And the benefit for zero rating locally assembled phones, Honorable Speaker, was to create jobs for young people in this country besides encouraging local manufacturing and local assembly of phones in this country, Honorable Speaker. Kenyans are aware that there are cult and deposits that have been discovered in this country. Instead of exporting these minerals to other countries to, in the manufacture of mobile phones, we would have been using these minerals in Kenya to begin assembling and manufacturing phones in Kenya. There is a local mobile assembler called East Africa Devices Assembly Kenya Limited, on a bochea, who has assembled 400,000 phones in a period of only six months since they commenced, and they're employing 300 young Kenyans in that assembly line. It is those jobs that we sought to protect. It is those jobs that we wanted to protect by zero rating this local assembly to encourage other local assemblers to come up and create more job opportunities for young Kenyans. But that, honorable chair, is now dead 
we are now conducting its funeral service to bury it. Honorable Speaker, there was VAT exemption to support recyclers involved in saving or rather in environmental conservation and we are exempting VAT on plant and machinery and equipment that is used in the construction of plastic recycling plants. Again, in this uh, era of climate change control and mitigation, to ensure that anybody who wants to come and set up the recycling, a recycling plant of plastics that are destroying our environment. If you look at Nairobi River today, it is a mass of uh, plastics flowing down to Lower Eastern. Honorable Chair, this is what we sought to protect Kenyans from, to ensure that we can get Kenyans who can invest in recycling of plastics not just to create jobs for young people, but also to conserve our environment. That, Honorable Speaker, is lost. Let me not belabor all the others because some are painful. Many of the huge savings under the VAT Act that we have lost, but they are lost, let us bury them. And I move that we delete and bury them. Honorable members, I now propose the question that closes 27 through to close 35 as read be deleted as recommended by His Excellency the President. I now put the question that closes 27 through to close 35 be deleted as proposed. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? aye? Will as many as of the contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. Provisions relating to Excise Duty Act, clauses 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, and 42. Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I beg to move that the clauses as read out relating to the Excise Duty Act be deleted as proposed by His Excellency the President. Again, Honorable Speaker, without belaboring the point, Kenyans were told that sanitary towels, diapers will be subject to excise duty. Further from the truth, Honorable Speaker, what was sought to be done by this bill was to only levy excise duty on fully, uh, asse not assembled, <laughs> uh, what do you call them? Finished products. Fully finished products of either diapers or sanitary towels imported from other countries so that we protect our local industries here in Mlolongo and Thika and other corners of our country over 10 manufacturers of diapers and sanitary pads who are producing an average of 148 million units of sanitary towels in a month against a consumption of 121 million units by, by our ladies around the country. Therefore, we have adequate capacity in this country to manufacture and even be able to export sanitary towels out of this country in the endeavor to actualize the import substitution policy we sought to protect our local manufacturers of these items and levy excise duty on our speaker on those that are fully uh, finished products being imported from china and other countries that is lost on our speaker now people can import them and uh, kill our industries on our speaker but i hope and i do pray that the ministry of trade and industry will take corrective measures to still protect our local manufacturers, to protect the jobs of young Kenyans who are working in those 10 industries producing locally. I beg to move, to delete, and uh, kill all these things, Honorable Speaker. As good as they are, they are dead. I move. Honorable members, I now propose the question that closes 36 right through to close 42, be deleted as recommended by His Excellency the President. Honorable members, I now put the question that closes 36 
through to clause 42 be deleted as proposed? Will as many as of that opinion say aye? aye. Will as many as of the contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. Provisions relating to miscellaneous fees and levies act. Clauses 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, and 49. Majority leader. I beg to move that the clauses as read out under the miscellaneous levies act be deleted as proposed by His Excellency the President. I move. Honorable members, I now propose that the, que the question that clauses 43 right through to 49 as read be deleted as recommended by His Excellency the President. Honorable members, I now put the question that clauses 43 through to clause 49 be deleted as proposed. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? Will as many as of the contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. Provisions relating to Tax Procedures Act. Clauses 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, and 62. Leader of Majority. Nimaik. Honorable Chair, I beg to move that the clauses as read out up to clause 62 be deleted as proposed by His Excellency the President. I move. Put the question. Honorable Members, I now propose the question that clauses 50 right through to clause 62 as read be deleted as recommended by His Excellency the President. Honorable members, I now put the question that clauses 50 right through to clause 62 be deleted as proposed. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? aye. Will as many as of the contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. Provisions relating to miscellaneous acts, clauses 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, and 69. Majority leader. Honorable Chair, I beg to move that the clauses as read out relating to various miscellaneous acts be deleted as proposed by His Excellency the President. I move. Honorable members, I now propose the question that clauses 63 through to clause 69 be deleted as recommended by His Excellency the President. I now put the question that clause 63 to clause 69 be deleted as proposed. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? aye. Will as many as of the contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. Close one. Mover. Honorable Chair, I beg to move that clause one, which is the title of the bill, be deleted as proposed by His Excellency the President. Therefore, 
Honorable Chair, for those who are asking whether even the title is being deleted, we have deleted it. So this bill, Honorable Chair, I think this, when you are dead and even your death certificate is printed, this bill has no name. I therefore move that you delete, delete everything, including the, the bill's name, which is the title of the bill, the Finance Act of 2024-2025, is therefore deleted. And I want to urge all of you to support the deletion of the name Finance Bill 2024-2025, because it has been deleted. 2024 as proposed by the President, Honorable Chair. Therefore, there is no finance bill 2024. I second. You know, it is the first time we are deleting the title. The Gekaria bill, at least we deleted the clause. We never deleted the title. What led the President to delete even the title, Honorable Speaker, is subject to discussions in the history of this House, and I'm sure and certain that those who will be studying the history of this house. At one time, we will read about a bill that was called the Finance Bill of 2024, whose name <laughs> or title was deleted. I move. Honorable members, I propose the question that clause one be deleted as recommended by His Excellency the President. Honorable members, I now put the question that clause one be deleted as proposed. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? aye. Will as many as of the contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. I now call upon the mover. Honorable Chairperson, I beg to move that the committee do report to the House its consideration of the President's recommendations to the Finance Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 30 of 2024, and its approval thereof without amendments, therefore deleting all clauses of the bill. Honorable Members, I put the question, which is that the committee do report to the House its consideration of the President's recommendations to the Finance Bill, National Assembly Bill, number 30 of 2024, and its approval thereof without amendments, therefore deleting all clauses of the bill. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? aye. Will as many as of, that, of the contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. Honorable members, Madam Speaker, Mover? No, Chairperson. Honorable Speaker, I, may, I beg to report that the Committee of the Whole House has considered the President's recommendations to the Finance Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 30 of 2024, and its approval thereof without amendments, therefore deleting all the clauses of the bill. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Chairperson. Move of the bill. Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that the House do agree with the committee in the said report. I also request Honorable Silvanas Osoro to second the motion for agreement with the report of the committee of the whole House. Honorable Osoro. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I 
wish to second, and even as I second, honorable speaker, I want to thank all the members that have participated in this. They are in agreement with what the president, uh, the reservations by His Excellency the President in regard to the bill, and um, but with a very heavy heart, honorable speaker. Be that as it may, I second. Honorable members, I propose the question, which is that the House do agree with the committee in the said report. Who the question? I put the question, which is that the House do agree with the committee in the said report. As many as are of that opinion say aye. aye. As many as are of a contrary opinion say nay. The ayes have it. Honorable members, allow me to issue this communication, guidance following the passage of the President's reservation to the Finance Bill 2024. Honorable members, the guidance relates to the just concluded business, which is the agreement with the report of the Committee of the Whole House on the consideration of the President's reservation to the Finance Bill, National Assembly Bill, number 30 of 2024. Honorable members, as you are aware, the House has voted in agreement with the President's reservation and the recommendation to delete all clauses of the Finance Bill 2024. Following this decision, the bill has been rejected in its entirety. I wish to clarify that the import of the decision of the House is that the bill is lost. Consequently, no provision that was contained in the bill shall have any legal effect. In this regard, honorable members, strictly speaking, there is no bill for the speaker to present to His Excellency the President for assent as contemplated under Article 115.5 of the Constitution. To signify the decision that the House has taken on the bill this afternoon, I shall therefore only convey the effect of the decision, which is that the Finance Bill, National Assembly Bill, number 30 of 2024, has been rejected. The House is accordingly guided. I thank you. Order number nine, Committee of Supply, first allotted day. Is this thing? Oh. 